let me go ahead and show you how I made my newest song, Dropping It. If you have not listened to my latest song yet, I don't know what you're doing, but check it out. This is actually my newest song, it's called Dropping It, and I made it about a month ago. Not only did I make it a month ago, I also released it a month ago. The way this song was made and released and everything was very interesting because it's not the usual genre I release. But here's the thing, 2023 is changing everything we are listening to, everything that is going viral, everything that we are enjoying, everything that people are is asking for. And I gotta be honest, I, I'm really falling in love with this stutter house, house, nostalgic kind of house thing that is going on around. And I think it has so much potential. And I've always been a huge fan of Eurodance, of this 2000s, 90s kind of house. I've always loved those open hi-hats. Like, I'm a huge, huge fan of anything that sounds nostalgic. And that is exactly why I made this song. I gotta be honest, I made this song just for fun. I was not supposed to release this. And I posted it on my stories and I was like, yo, I'm vibing this. And people were going nuts. I haven't seen people reacting to my music that way in years. Some of my producer friends that have gotten so huge that don't even send me a message anymore, send me a message about it. And they were like, yo, that is so sick. How can people be so crazy about it? So it made me ask myself, should I just finish this? And this is how I made this song. I'm gonna walk you guys through it. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I did it. And this is how I made the track. The idea basically started off with this, okay? It's just a piano, sounds like this. Without any effects, the piano sounds like this. So it's a grand piano. then a sort of like electric piano. I try to I try to make it more interesting by changing the whole chord overall and I just couldn't make it sound that interesting, you know? So what I did was I cloned the first part and I made sure that the last notes were just repeating faster and that made a significant change for people not to get bored listening to it, but it also made a change that wasn't that big, so the whole energy on the song changed. It ended up sounding like this. I've also, of course, filtered it. Basically, that repeats over and over and over again throughout the whole song. I think the pluck really adds something, so without it, I think it's cool, but it's not, it, it's lacking that crunchiness. It's lacking that like, you know? So we add that. And that's it for the pianos. Then we went ahead and added a bass sign, which sounds like this. Without any effects, it sounded like this. Let's start off with the sub. The sub is actually the sub I use on every single song. If you've watched any of my tutorials, you'll see that this sub is being used on everything. And also, if you wanna check this sub out, you can actually get it from my sound banks. This is how the sub sounds like. Without any effects. It has a bit of high frequencies because I did add some distortion with Camel Crusher, as you can see here. Just British clean, really adds really cool distortion. And I just got rid of the highs for the sub. Then I went ahead and added, and added an organ bass, which is the usual M1 piano. And then I went ahead and added two more basses. One of them sounds like this. Then another one. Uh, my idea with this, remember, nowadays everyone's doing music that sounds very um, analog, that sounds very organic. So my my goal here was 
I'm not going to add a sound that sounds too futuristic or too crazy. I want to add sounds that sound nostalgic, sounds you've heard before. And that's what I did. Just so you guys know, I just dropped a Melodic House Essentials Serum Sound Bank where I added all of these bases as well as new ones where I created um, that I created specifically for this type of genre, Stutter House, Euro Dance, whatever you want to do. Um, check this out. If you want to make the typical If you want to go check it out, it's available at store.jsker.com. Um, let's keep on going with this video. Now, after I made the piano, then I went ahead and made a, an arp that would repeat a same, the same note over and over again. Sound like this. And remember, the melody, the, the chord progression, and remember, the chord progression starts with an E, which means the root note of the song is an E. But why am I using an A? I am using an A because I've, I felt like it was a note that was giving more tension to the song. And you might think this isn't important, but let me play the drop, or let me play the melody without the arp, and then I'm going to add it. Once I add the arps, it sounds like this. It it creates this sort of like tension. It it puts you in this in this like happy mood. Um, after this, I was like, bro, I need to add something to make sure it's not boring because you don't want to keep the same thing playing over and over and over again. Um, of course, you make use of like automations and stuff like that to make it interesting but i wanted another element like i wanted something different so i went ahead and added a, a different bass line um which sounds like this without a fix it has a lot of bass so i got rid of it and when you play it together with the original bass line it sounds like this can you guys notice if you notice this melody is not playing the same baseline melody how does it sound good it's all basically harmonics i i am playing notes that are a part of the same chords that are a part of the same scale that's first part like make sure you're on scale and what it's doing here is basically playing a melody and over, I, I guess there should be a, a, there should be a music theory name for this. I'm sure it should be like inverse melody or something like that, but it's basically playing a melody that goes very well with the original bass line. When you play everything together. Not only did this add a level of depth to the song, but it also added a level of emotions to the song, which is what I wanted. I wanted to add more emotions here. So in this part, it's like you get even more helpful, you know? Afterwards, I created a melody that sounds like this. Simple. Without any effects. With effects. When you play everything together. Then I went ahead and added some drums, of course. Here's a kick. Then a hi-hat. Then some snares. Then some rim shots. Then I went ahead and added, and added a clap and then another clap. Then I added hi-hats. Then I added more hi-hats. 
And then last but not least, I added more hi-hats. I mean, yes, they are there to fill out frequencies, but they're also there to add rhythm and also space. So how do I know when I should add more hi-hats? Uh, you never know. And it's, it's all about taste. Like if you want your song to be very full of drums, um, you can add more. But if you listen to like, let's say new Skrillex song where he is making Stutter House, you'll notice that his drums are a bit less cluttered. This is crazy. This is, I, I'm adding a lot of drums and I keep the same energy throughout the whole song. The only thing I add and remove is a ride, a ride loop. This thing. But the, the, the whole song plays the entire drum loop, like throughout the whole song. I'm not, I'm not really taking anything off or adding anything off. I'm just adding a ride or removing it. And uh, the song pretty much goes from there. So I went ahead and started working on it really quick. And guess what? I found a vocal that worked very well, but it was too short. So what I had to do was basically play around with the melody and make it longer, you know? So we ended up with this melody or with this vocal. It sounds like this. It used to sound like this before without any effects. I made the format go up. Sounds like this. I really wanted this to sound uh, happy, to have this nostalgic emotion, to have this emotion of like, you, you're able to let go and just sing, you know? But then I went ahead and added, and added, of course, more old school type of sounds, like a 909 snare going up. Going up. And that's the whole thing I'm using for transitions, bro. I'm not using anything else besides like another snare fill and some noise. And that's it. Just like they did in the 90s and like 2000s, they didn't have any crazy cymatics uplifters. Um, and that's pretty much it for the song. Like that was it. I'm actually recording this video standing up and I think it's really cool because I'm able to like move around a, li a little bit more than when I'm sitting down. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. Listen, if I'm making this video to show you how to make house music, to show you how to make music in general, it's not because I want to show you like my mastering chain and stuff like that. Those things are important, but the most important thing about music is having fun when making it, making something that you enjoy, making something that fulfills you before anybody else, before anybody else. Don't please, if you're watching this video and you barely started making music, enjoy what you're doing and do what you think is right. Don't make music to please others. And if you're scared of trying new genres just because it's not the genre you usually do, go ahead and do it. Trust me, you're gonna feel so good and you're gonna feel so free. And it might inspire you to create a brand new sound, you know? It is so fun and so fulfilling when you do stuff that is fun. What really matters here, what really matters here is not my mastering, it's not my mixing, it's not anything. It's the only thing that really matters here is that I put emotion into it and that I'm really enjoying it. And it, it's, it's more than just a good EQ kind of song. It's a good song. Next time you're working on a song, forget about mixing, forget about mastering, for, forget about the best EQ you can use. Start focusing more on whether you're enjoying what you're producing and whether you're actually making a good song. That's all we care about. The songwriting is what really, really matters here. The key to success or the key to being a better producer, it's not a plugin. It's not an EQ. It's you. Nobody will be able to songwrite exactly the same way you do because nobody thinks the same way you think. Nobody processes stuff the same way you do. Remember, Yes, we are artists and we are making music so people can enjoy it. But don't make music for people. Make music for you. And trust me, 
people that relate to who you are as a person will come. And those people are going to be the ones that really, really, really stay because they're going to connect with you on a complete different level or more like connect with your music in a different level. Um, so that was it for this song. Like it's basically a song I made on TikTok. I posted a small story. Everybody went crazy for it. I posted a TikTok with it. Everyone went crazy with it. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to release it next week. And I did. And it's super fun. I don't know. It was really awesome. And I'm really wanting to make more of this kind of house uh, style. I've been wanting to make like an album, even if I'm able to, you know, I think it's very inspiring. And I hope you guys are inspired too. please go ahead and make music right now. Um, for my mastering, you know, I just use a sausage fatter of 1% and 20 uh, sound goodizers. Um, there's not much else to see there, you know. But anyways, I see you. I'll see you. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you very, very soon. Okay. I got a song coming up this Friday on Future House Music. So check it out. I'm going to make a video too for it. So maybe I'll just make it right now. Fuck it. Let's go do it. I'll see you guys soon.